What is going on, YouTube world? My name is Adam Allard with PragmaticWays.com, and in today's video, we are going to be going over another leak code problem, and this one is called the best time to buy and sell a stock. All right, this is another easy problem, so let's just go ahead and uh, jump right into it here. So we're going to be given an array called prices, where prices at any given index is the price of a given stock on the ith day. So for instance, that might sound a little bit confusing. For instance, we're given this array here. Uh, each element here is a different price for a different day. So we can say like on Monday, maybe it cost uh, $7 for this stock, okay? And then on Tuesday, it was $1. On Wednesday, it was $5. On Thursday, it was $3, so on and so forth, okay? So the purpose here now that we wanna do is we wanna maximize the profit by choosing a single day to buy a stock and then choosing a different date in the future to sell that stock. So for instance, I couldn't buy here on Tuesday and then sell yesterday, sell on Monday. No, we have to choose one day to buy it and then choose a different date in the future to sell it. So somewhere over here to sell it. And we wanna find at what point could we buy and sell to maximize our profit. So for instance, if we bought here at $1 and then sold here at $6, well, that would be our maximum profit because six minus one equals five. Like it wouldn't make sense to buy here and then sell here because then we'd only make $3. So we want to maximize the profit by buying here, buying low, and then selling high right here, okay? Um, so return the maximum profit you can achieve from this transaction. If you cannot achieve any profit, return zero. So for instance, let's look at this example here. Well, this is in descending order. So there is no possible way that we could buy lower than we would sell because every number after the, the every single number is in descending order um so there, there's no buy low or and sell high concept here so we would just return zero our maximum profit in this case would be zero we cannot make any profit all right so how can we solve this here how could we create some sort of algorithm that would solve this problem for any given input well, one way we could solve this is to sort of use our naive approach and just use a nested for loop here. And essentially we test every element against each other and we try and find the maximum profit going like this. So we take a seven and one, and then we test seven and five, and then we test seven and three, seven and six, and then seven and four, so on and so forth. And we test one and five, we test one and three, and we go uh, on through this whole um, approach here until we try and find the maximum profit uh, for any given uh, pair of elements here. And that could work, but of course that's the O of n squared solution. Uh, it's the naive approach, a very not optimal solution here. So how can we sort of increase our time complexity here and make it a more optimal solution? Well, we know we wanna try and find the lowest stock that we could buy, the lowest value in our stock array that we could buy. But it's not always that simple either. We don't always want to find only lowest because we want to find the lowest in relation to the maximum profit that we can get. For instance, uh, let's change up this array here because this doesn't really paint the full picture of a good use case here. So let's say this was actually three and this is 30. And then let's say this was one. Well, now we can see that our biggest profit is right here, but three isn't actually our lowest possible stock. One is. One's now our lowest stock. And clearly, again, we can't buy here and then sell here. So we would know that using these stocks here, buying here and selling here, this would be our biggest profit, despite our lowest possible stock being here. Okay? So then again, how can we do this? Well, we kind of want to keep track of, just like we did in our nested for loop approach, we're going to want to keep track of our maximum profit. And we'll probably keep this in some sort of temporary variable. And then we're also going to want to know our minimum buy price at any given time. Because in this scenario here, let's say we did come across this. Well, we would say that our minimum buy price is here. And then our current maximum profit would be the next element minus our current minimum price. And then so once we go here, well, now we want to test all these numbers against our minimum price and see if any of these numbers after this point would be our max profit. Okay. So let's kind of see, let's just kind of work through that then. So we're going to say, all right, our current number here is seven. So our current min price could be seven. 
And what's our maximum profit? Actually, yeah, let me start there actually. Before we even start going through this and start iterating through this array here, we can just sort of conceptually understand that our maximum profit in any given scenario is going to be zero. Before we start anything, we know that before we even check anything, we know that right now, without iterating through this, our maximum profit is zero. Because what if, in like example two of leak code, what if this was already in descending order? Well, then our max profit would still be zero. So let's just go ahead and initialize this right off the gate as zero. And then we can initialize our minimum buy price just as the first element in the array, just because we know we're going to have to start there anyways. All right. So we go ahead and start here. And we say, all right, this first one, is this less than our current minimum price? Well, no, it's not. It, that doesn't make sense. It is the current minimum price. Okay. So now if it's not the current minimum price, then find out what this current profit would be. Well, our current profit is going to be this current index for this current element minus our current minimum buy price. So seven minus seven equals zero. And now this is our current profit. Does our current profit of zero, is that greater than our current maximum profit of seven? Oops. Well, no, it's not. It's, it's they're the same. All right. So let's go ahead and try the next one. Then we're going to be iterating through our loop, through our array, and we'll try the next one. All right. First thing we're going to check is, is this price here less than our current minimum buy price? Yes, it is. So I'm going to go ahead and update our current minimum buy price price. All right, so now we're saying our new buy price is right here. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next one then. Is this element here less than our current minimum buy price? No, it's not. All right, so now let's check our maximum. So I'm going to say this minus this equals 27. Is 27 greater than our current maximum profit? Yes, it is. Our current profit is only zero. So I'm going to go ahead and update our maximum profit to 27 then. And then I'll move on, go to the next one. And I'll say one, first thing I do is check our minimum buy price. Is our current element less than our minimum buy price? Well, yes it is, it's one. So I'll update that, move on to the next one. All right, and six. Is six less than our current minimum buy price? No, it's not. All right, so now I'm gonna check the profit. Our current profit is six minus our minimum buy price is one, is, so which is five. So our current profit would be five if we did this. Is five less than our maximum profit? No, it's not. So I want to keep our maximum profit then. And then we can kind of see then conceptually, uh, this would be the exact same. This would come out as three. Is three less than that? No, it's not. So we know then that this approach here would uh, ensure that we come out with a maximum profit at this point. So that's sort of conceptually how we could solve this problem. Let's see what that actually looks like in code now. All right, so the first thing we want to do here is we want to keep track of our maximum profit. And like I mentioned before, we can just go ahead and initialize this as zero. And we also want to keep track of our minimum buy price at any given point. And I'm going to go ahead and initialize this as just the first element in our array here. And now I want to, um, first I'm going to also return our max profit at the very end. We know that's going to happen. And now we also want to just iterate through our for loop here, or iterate through our array here, I mean, and by using a for loop. So I'm going to go ahead and create a for loop. I'll say int price of prices. And now the first thing we want to do is we want to check if our price is less than our minimum buy price. We want to know if we need to update our minimum buy price. So I'll say if price is less than the minimum buy price, well, then we're just going to update our minimum buy price min buy price equals price. Else, if it's not greater, if it's not less than the minimum buy price, then of course it's greater than it. So we want to figure out what the current potential profit might be. So int current profit is going to equal the price minus the min buy price. And now I want to see if this current potential profit is greater than our maximum profit. Because if it is, well then of course we want to update our maximum profit. So if her profit is greater than our max profit, well then we have a new max profit. Max profit equals the her profit. And now this should work. I'm gonna go ahead and press run code here just to make sure I didn't make any silly syntax errors. And we're good, okay. But now we could probably refactor just a tiny bit here. You know, people may agree or disagree with this. Um, I don't think this is a terrible approach at all, but some people might like a little bit less code and it kind of means the same thing. 
Um, but some people might think, you know, using these if and else statements is a little bit more clear. Uh, so I guess it's kind of up to personal preference. But what I'm getting at is what we could do is just use the math.max and the math.min function. Because all we're really doing here is saying we want our max profit to be the maximum of either max profit or current profit. So I could just say uh, max profit equals the math.max of we want to test our current profit against our current max profit. And now that's going to do the exact same thing. So I can get rid of that. We're also doing the same thing with our first conditional here as well. We're basically saying I want this minimum price to be the minimum between either this price or what's already stored inside of here. So now I could just say uh, min buy price is going to equal the math.min of we want to test our price against our current minimum buy price. And now this actually also does the same exact thing. So now our two-part step isn't even inside of an if-else statement. It just does all of it all, all at once. Um, so I could go ahead and run this code again, make sure it still comes out handy dandy and fine. That's still accepted. And I'll go ahead and submit this solution now, see if uh, we get the green light. And we do. We got success. All right. So this is a, a pretty good way of solving this sort of solution here. We can see that we're only iterating through this um, array one time. So, you know, for time complexity sakes, this is going to be uh, time complexity, complexity, there we go, of big O of N, because we're just iterating through the array one time. And then for the space complexity, it's really just constant space. It's big O of, of one, because we're not creating any additional data structures or really save the only other pieces of memory we're saving are two little variables and you know that's constant space complexity so that's not going to change given the input of given the the changes of the size of the input array you know don't, no matter how big or small this input array is we're only going to be saving uh using up two additional memory spaces so this is uh, constant space complexity big o of n time complexity if you liked this video, if you liked this solution, uh, you like my voice or don't like my voice, either way, whatever you do or don't, go ahead and hit that like button regardless. Also, please consider subscribing uh, to be notified of when I come up with new videos on programming challenges from Leak Code or maybe Hacker Rank or other programming challenge sites. Um, be notified of other programming videos in general. Follow my blog because I write articles and come up with videos such as clean coding, refactoring code, talking about design patterns and data structures, all the great stuff, all the stuff to make you a rock star solid software engineer. So please do consider subscribing and until next time everyone, happy coding.